I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 11 in my book, Fishing the Bucktail. Okay, I've decided to make a video out of an entire trip, and I'm just getting started here. So this is going to be a, a long video. It's broken into two parts. Um, first part about 25 minutes, and the second part about 40 minutes. And um, you know, once I turn the camera on for a drift, I will turn the camera off until I get to the end of the drift. So you're going to see everything that happens as it happens. Sea robins, tangles, whatever goes on. Um, this is July in Long Island Sound. And uh, we've kind of lost the larger fish and we'll have to cull through a lot of smaller ones to put together um, a five fish legal limit of 18 inch plus fish. So um, these fish have been moving around a lot and what I've found I had to do, watch there, I'm hitting the GPS, is to try to find where the birds are working that are marking the bait. And so I've come out and that's what I've done. I've seen the birds, I've gone right to them. And um, you can see right away I've got a double. And I'm not used to fishing this particular area, so I don't have any GPS marks on it. So with that hookup, I immediately took a GPS mark so I could get back on it. Um, but this is a nice way to start, and you're going to see some um, pretty fast-paced action on this trip. I'm using a 6-foot medium action uh, bait casting rig, 15-pound test spider wire stealth braid. At the end of the braid, I have um, about a three foot liter of 20 pounds has fluorocarbon. At the end of that is a surgeon's loop, and I use that to attach a bucktail, in this case, a one ounce bucktail. One foot above that, I have a small dropper loop, and I attach a plain Gamagatsu bait holder hook, uh, size 3 0. And both the bucktail and that plain hook are tipped with four inch Berkeley Gulp Alive swimming mullets in white and, and that's what I'll be using throughout this trip. The braid is attached to the fluorocarbon leader with a small barrel swivel and on my YouTube channel there's a separate video that shows all of the rigging instructions. You'll see many times in the video where the, um, the gulp grub slides off the hook a little bit from having a fish on. I'll just slide it back off the hook and hook it onto um, into a new portion of the bait. And I don't care whether that tail is pointing up or down or sideways. As long as that tail's not ripped and I can keep the hook in the bait, I'll just keep using those grubs over and over. And um, I usually get seven to ten fish per gulp grub, so it turns out to be pretty economical. Okay, so right there you saw I restarted the video. Um, what I've done is run up to make a new drift. And so, you know, why did I make a drift after I just caught, uh, you know, a bunch of fish one after another? <clears throat> the reason was that when I started, I had a double header. So mentally, I'm just thinking that I must have started that drift like in the middle of that body of fish. And that was kind of in the back of my mind. And as I drifted back a little further, and that last fish was kind of small and... Uh, I just kind of wanted to run further up from where I started um, to start a new drift and uh, to try to get a feel for how large this body of fish is. I mentioned looking for the birds and by that I meant arctic terns and um, several times in the video you'll be able to see those birds working pretty close to uh, where I'm fishing. and they Those are the smaller birds, a little bit um, smaller than the typical seagulls. and. Uh, they're just very good bait markers. They make a lot of noise too, which is nice because you, you can just sort of keep your ears open for them and uh, you know when they're in the area. And they do a very good job of pointing out where the sand eels are. And uh, especially this particular season, you really need to get um, on those bodies of sand eels to get the fluke. They're not hanging on the typical structure as much as they usually do. Uh, it's one of the reasons you're not seeing any other boats anywhere near me is because um, there are boats out, but um, they're out on some typical structure that just hasn't been very productive for me. So um, I've been out looking for the birds. And here's a bird of another kind. Uh, these are sea robins, so um, uh, we call them birds sometimes as well. And that's an interference fish. We don't want to be catching these. Uh, obviously, I'm losing time here having to deal with them. 
they've got nasty spikes on the top they're very heavily armored uh, that's why I'm using a rag to keep my hand from getting torn up um, and you'll see these uh, several times throughout the video because many times they're mixed in with the fluke catches So this isn't going to be as bad as it looks. Um, the fish is not gut hooked. It's got the hook <clears throat> in the, the top of its mouth and I need to push it back and, and undo the barb and get it out and, and I'm doing that successfully. And One of the nice things about fishing um, the, the bucktail teaser rig and setting the hook immediately um, you know, when you feel weight, which is what I'm doing, um, you really eliminate deeply hooked fish and, and I think back to times when I used to drag strip baits and spearing and other things like that on conventional rigs and uh, you know so many times the fish end up getting that right in the stomach and if it's a you know short fish and you gotta throw it back and you know you know it's not gonna survive but um, so that's a nice thing about this kind of fishing is the vast majority 99 percent of these fish are hooked um, you know, very easily in the mouth where you can just pop the hook out and no damage is done. The drift speed for this trip uh, is about one mile an hour, and it's just about perfect for this kind of fishing. I keep my drifts relatively short, uh, roughly 8 to 15 minutes, but if you think about it, 15 minutes at one mile an hour, uh, it's a quarter of a mile, so that's a, you know, you're covering a fair amount of bottom in that amount of time. So I pulled this double up just as a boat was going by and uh, it probably wasn't the brightest thing to do. Uh, so I'll have a, uh, some company for the rest of this trip. Well, it's not a big deal. It's obviously all the room in the world over here. Um, but if I had wanted to keep this um, to myself, I probably should just run up when I knew that boat was going by, but oh well. I think this right here is the longest I go on this entire trip um, without hooking a fish. And when I look back on the video, it was something like 45 seconds.
So there's another 40 seconds or so of nothing, and uh, that's definitely enough to go up and make a new drift. can't imagine how much money worth of sand eels or spearing or other soft baits uh, I would have gone through on this trip at the rate these fish are hitting. Yeah, these sea robins don't help much either. So I am trying to shift my drifts around just a little bit, uh, hoping to find some larger fish. Uh, it, it's just the way it is at this time of the year. Um, we seem to lose the larger fish, and you've got to go through a lot of small ones to, to get some keepers. And um, the, the fact that that one boat had come in from um, further out, which is a spot maybe three-quarters of a mile away, and, and then stopped when he saw I had fish, I mean, that tells me you know he still wanted the fish, but... Um, you know, he hadn't done well out where I suspected it wasn't good. So I just don't see a lot of options except to you know, stay on this body of fish and try to move around a little bit and, and, and find some larger fish. And eventually I'm going to do that, but it, it just uh, takes a little bit of time. A lot of fish on this uh, trip are just short. So when you measure these, the mouth needs to be closed. I mean, that is clearly over the 18 inch limit if I don't close the mouth. Um, once I close the mouth, it is just barely short. But that's the proper way to measure these fish. And um, if you were boarded by um, a DEC boat and uh, they were going to start measuring fish, they would be doing it with the mouths closed. So uh, that's definitely the way you have to measure them to be legal. So that fish was on the bucktail, and um, a couple of the previous videos that I've done in Long Island Sound, I've been using uh, tsunami teasers. In one case, the tsunami glass minnow, and the other, the tsunami hollow teaser. And um, on those trips, well over 75% of the fish took the teaser. And on this trip, where I'm using just the plain hook and the gulp grub, it's more like a 50-50 split. Uh, certainly, I'm seeing a higher percentage of fish on the bucktail on this trip than on the trips when I was using the tsunami teaser. So it's not a huge sample set to do that over a few trips and draw a firm conclusion, but um, from what I've seen, I definitely think that uh, I did a little bit better by using those tsunami teasers as opposed to using just a bear hook.
Okay, so um, why am I not ending this drift here and going back up? I and mean, this is awful. This is like you know, four C robins in a row here. Um, you you might notice that I keep looking over at my fish finder. I've drifted back far enough from the original spot that I'm getting close to um, a couple of marks on my GPS of places where I've done well fluke fishing before. So I know if I drift for another couple of minutes, I'm going to hit these spots. And at this point, you know, I know there's a lot of fish in the area that I just drifted over, but um, I'm not getting any keepers. So I'm at a point now where I'm trying to expand the drift a little bit. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting this drift out um, to get back to those GPS marks and you know, see if I can find something just a little bit bigger. I just need fish that are a half an inch bigger and um, to get some into the cooler. I'm pretty sure uh, this is the only time on the entire trip where I pulled up my rig um, when it didn't have a fish on it or it wasn't the end of the drift. It seems I drifted out of those sea robins. Uh, that's, this is three fluke in a row now, and and this one's a better one. Finally, one for the cooler, and I will limit out on this trip in part two of this video. Thanks for watching.